Welcome again to furniture underscore makeover with a brand new makeover. If you want to see how I turn this gorgeous dresser into what it looks like right now, please continue following. I got this dresser from a coworker of mine. They did not need this dresser. It had a couple drawers that don't open or close anymore as well as a lot of stains and scratches up top. And I knew this was the piece for me. I went ahead and picked it up from them, got home, started cleaning it, pulled all the knobs out and gave it a really good cleaning inside and out to know exactly what I'm working with while I'm cleaning the surface to know exactly what I need for the drawers to fix them and this is where it all began. Obviously as you can see I couldn't have done none of this without the help of my dog Shadow. <laughs> I then started sanding the surface and I knew I gotta go all the way to the grain from the top. Unfortunately my camera did not film the entire process but I sanded the entire top and the beneath was beautiful. Although it was veneer, I loved the finish so I had to do something about it. There are many ways to know if this is veneer or not. One is looking at the dresser from the back to see if there was a thin layer on the top which tells you it's veneer. In this case it was not possible because the back was covering that part. But I looked at the chips on the top which shows the plywood underneath which tells me what it is. This is why I had to use a 220 grit sanding paper just so that I don't harm the top which worked out amazing. I next gave the dresser a really good cleaning so that I can prepare for the next step which is taping the top so that I can paint the bottom. Originally I was planning to stain the top which is why I did it this way because it's easier to paint than stain rather than the opposite. Because if you stain first the paint will not stick well on the wood. I covered the top really well with tape, I went ahead and pressed it hard so that nothing leaks through. Here I grabbed bin primer and uh, added to my gravity sprayer so that I can give the dresser a really good priming just so nothing leaks through, the paint gets absorbed really well and after I applied the first coat I went ahead and grabbed a Polar Bear White by Bear and gave it uh, two or three coats I believe just because it was going from really dark to white it took it many coats for it to be the white that I wanted. Finally it was time for me to look around and make sure there is no more necessary touch-ups in order for me to remove the tape and start working on the top. In this video I had a few of the drawers open because I was giving them coats around that didn't touch up well and so I kept opening some, touching them up, close them, open another one, touch it up until I was satisfied. I did not sped up this video because it's so satisfying removing the tape with these really nice lines. Here's what the top looked like and I fell in love with it. I didn't want to do anything with it. Originally I wanted to stain it but the stain will hide a lot of details that I had right there so I decided to whitewash it. And not just any whitewash, I grabbed the same paint I painted the bottom and I whitewashed the top. How crazy is that, isn't it? But that's what I did. For those of you who don't know what is whitewash, and it is basically grabbing the paint, adding some water to it, usually goes 50-50, but it's as whatever is desired. You have to apply it at bare wood, so if it's painted, it's not gonna work for you. As you see, my top is completely bare. I sanded it all the way to the bottom. I got 50-50 water and paint. Again, it's the same paint that I use on the bottom, and I just run a brush back and forth until I cover the entire surface, and then I grabbed a towel and wiped it down if it, the color was satisfying, I was done. If it was not satisfying, I go ahead and repeat the process, add more paint, whitewash it, then dry it, and then look at it again to see if it's satisfying or not. Once you're satisfied, wait for it to dry 100% and then add clear coat to seal it. I did not fast forward this video either just to show you how fast and satisfying this process is. I was very mesmerized as I was using the brush on, th on the top and I went ahead and used it uh, uh, with the grain just in case I caused any stroke with the paint where I didn't mix the paint well. That's okay because it's gonna blend in with the texture of the surface. 
After I was done, I took a step back and absorbed this beautiful view. Look at this top. Can you believe this is what it was before? Can you believe I did this? I mean, I work on furniture all the time, but this is just the piece that made me say, oh my god, I did this. Um, obviously, after it dried out, I had to use a sealer to, to cover it because if I don't, whatever you put on the top will stain it because this is still the bare wood. I used the Verthain Semi Gloss Sealer. Usually, you're supposed to put it in a tray and roll it there, but I went ahead and used a brush and grabbed the can because I didn't want to get any more surfaces dirty. This will seal the top because if you don't, whatever you put on top of it will just stain it. And not only that it's going to seal it, but whatever you put on top of it would literally be reflected on the top. This is just a beautiful, beautiful sealer. Finally, finally, I added all these knobs on the dresser. And then when I was done, I just waited for it to completely dry, then stage it and started taking pictures so that I can sell this cutie. This was a one day makeover, as you see, it was still daytime. It probably took me five and a half hours to finish the entire thing. Most of the time was spent on sanding. The rest of the time was less than a couple of hours. And the results are beautiful. I was really satisfied. This is how I turned this piece into this. Can you believe this is the same piece? Let me know what you think about this. And if you don't already, please follow me on Instagram at furniture underscore makeover to see all these makeovers that I do day by day because I film everything, I add it to my story, I share all the details, all the how to's with the tools and you'll see me picking up everything, talking about everything and showing you all new projects before it's even posted here on YouTube. Lastly, if you don't already do, please subscribe to my channel. This is the smallest contribution you can do. And if you like what I do, you'll get notified as soon as I post something so you never miss a thing. I hope you have a blessed day and can't wait to see you on my next video.